Hello everybody, this is Dr. Cole. It's Sunday afternoon, November 3rd. This will be the announcement for week four of Political Science 1013 for the fall 2024 term of the second eight weeks. Everybody, uh, this will be a fairly lengthy announcement today because not only do we have the midterm exam coming up, but also there's the election and I wanted to say a little bit about that. So please bear with me. We might be 15 or 20 minutes today, so we'll see. Anyway, everyone, the exam will be Thursday, Thursday the 7th, two days after the election, over units three and four on the media and the Constitution. The, the Constitution unit is the lengthier of the two, and I tried to talk about that a little bit last time. I hope you've got an early start on that. It's a lengthy reading assignment on the Constitution. In addition, you have four articles to be accessed online, two about the media. One of them is about social media influencers, to whom many young people are looking as a source of news. The other is about the economic condition of broadcast media, especially television. Bro Broken Chords, I believe, is the title of that article. Then you have Two articles are related to free speech issues. They both discuss the protests that took place on many college campuses earlier in the year, largely on the east and west coast, especially at Columbia University, over the conflict between Israel and Hamas and Israel's campaign in the Gaza Strip. So I had an article about the protests themselves and one about the free speech principles that the author thinks ought to apply to protests like that. Okay, uh, everyone, we had mentioned last time that we try to take you, the first thing we try to do is take you through about 150 years of history up to the Constitutional Convention. All right, now, we go through the original seven articles of the Constitution, uh, many of whose provisions are still in place, but some have been changed by, by, by subsequent constitutional amendments. We then stop at that point and talk a little bit about the thought behind the Constitution, going back to English constitutionalism and also ancient philosophy about politics. And um, we then connect that up to the Federalist Papers. Please be sure you have at least read through the Federalist Papers, numbers 10 and 51 in the appendix to your textbook. And there's a link to those online. Okay, you, you can use the hard copy of the textbook or the online version. The, the, the chapters are linked online in the modules area of the course website. If you have trouble, the two essays are summarized in the class notes for Unit 4. So we go through the original seven articles. Okay. Then we talk a bit about the thought behind the Constitution and the Federalist Papers. We move on to look at the Bill of Rights, which we go through in fairly... Uh, uh, fair amount of detail, the first 10 amendments. We talk about, we don't talk about every single amendment. We talk about the ones added after the Civil War, especially the 14th Amendment. We have a bit to say about the 25th Amendment because toward the end of Trump's presidency, there was some thinking, his first term, there was some thinking the 25th Amendment might be invoked, uh, might have been invoked. There's also the matter of Section 3 of the 25th Amendment, which talks about disqualifying people who have taken part in an insurrection. And some people thought that could be applied against Trump. But the state of Colorado tried to do so, and the Supreme Court said, no, only Congress could enforce uh, that provision of the Constitution. We go on to talk about, very briefly, civil rights, civil liberties, and federalism. Now, we've assigned you a chapter on each of those topics from the textbook. Be sure you understand the difference between civil rights and civil liberties. The two readings you will be doing for the exam have, to have, of course, to do with free speech, which is a civil liberty rather than a civil right. And, of course, that's been an extremely fraught issue given some of the acti protest activities that have taken place recently on college campuses. Federalism refers in the main to the relationship between the states and the feds. We also have local government, but constitutionally speaking, 
the states and the feds are fundamental. And we have an ongoing dispute trying to interpret where the power of the feds stops and the power of the states pick up. Here we, we, we give our states uh, more prerogative and more status under the Constitution than just about any other federal system around the world. And it's been an ongoing issue in our politics. And toward the end of those class notes, we talk about exactly where the division of power and responsibility lies in issues like welfare, highway funding, health care, education, uh, elementary and secondary, as well as higher education with regard to Title IX. Okay, so there's quite a bit of material there to look at. I hope you will take a look at, at that and give it as much time as you can. We had said that uh, for the purposes of studying for the exam, the material from the textbook, chapter two is perhaps most important, but I hope you will at least be able to read through three, four, and five before the exam. It relates to material, those chapters relate to material we talk about at the very end of the class notes for Unit 4 on the Constitution. Okay, everybody, so the test will be available all day, Thursday the 7th, for 24 hours. Uh, everybody, on Friday, I will get out the material for Exam 3, the reading assignment and other announcements. That will be over Units 5 and 6 on the presidency and the federal bureaucracy. Everybody, I will not be able to revise those class notes for Unit 5 extensively in the aftermath of the election. Time is just too short. I may do some very light editing, a sentence or two here and there. We're not even sure when the election will be resolved. Last time, the media organizations did not call the election for Mr. Biden until the Saturday after the election. And we don't know how that will go this time. I need to say a few words about that in just a moment. But in any case, don't expect those class notes to be radically revised in the light of the results of the election. You'll basically be getting the same class notes I, re I, I revised a few weeks ago during the first eight-week term. Because uh, we, we're just in, in too tight a time window, with too short notice to do much revisions. We may acknowledge the result of the election if it has been called by then. All right, now the election itself. Uh, everybody, it is very difficult, if, almost impossible, if not almost impossible, to predict with any confidence the result of the election. Uh, Trump is running stronger than he did four years ago. And his people, some of them at least, are at him very confident. Uh, both sides are being cautiously optimistic. We have to be careful because the electorate is not the same as it was in 2016 or 2020. People are dying off and coming into the electorate all the time. And furthermore, different constituent groups within the electorate, there are shifts in their views going on all the time. Uh, shifts in a direction that prompts those voters to perhaps vote in a way differently than they might have a decade or two ago. So it's highly, highly unpredictable. Uh, you might say that recent inflation is, is the main thing working in favor of Mr. Trump. Uh, inflation is a very difficult thing to hang around the neck of a political party. And Mrs. Her uh, Vice President Harris is the incumbent vice president, of course. Uh, me people in the media will tell you inflation has eased, but prices have not gone back down. Prices are still high. Then there's the matter of the border, immigration, but also issues such as transgender rights. Mr. Trump has a videotape of Vice President Harris back when she was a presidential candidate in 2019 advocating taxpayer-funded transgender transition surgeries for immigrants and prisoners. He's been running that commercial with that interview clip over and over and over. Some people think many people don't care much about the issue. Trump and his people seem to feel differently. Okay. As I think we've mentioned to you in the class notes, that's the kind of matter about which there will be a religious versus secular difference. Now that's a, the, the system is trending in that direction. The partisan divide takes on a more and more religious versus secular character over the past time. It seems to be a trend. Um,
excuse me, everybody. Um, one thing that makes the election very difficult to predict, shifting allegiances of groups within the political system. Um, Trump seems to be doing better than he or other Republican candidates have done in recent times with voters under 30 and voters of color, black and brown voters, African-American voters of Hispanic descent. Democrats hope to compensate for that with college-educated voters and women. Vice President Harris thinks perhaps abortion is her biggest issue, along with the aftermath of the 2020 election and the events of January 6, 2021, and Mr. Trump's actions and statements at that time. So, it remains to be seen um, how all that will uh, pan out. So, a, a highly unpredictable election. Um, everybody, if we taught this course over two terms instead of one, the way we do American or world history, uh, I might have more to say about public opinion polls. The trouble with public opinion polls is when I was your age, uh, or perhaps, uh, yeah, yeah but, uh, that, that would be decades ago, that would have been a time when most everybody had a landline telephone. Today, many people do not have landlines, and furthermore, we've been told, even if, if you have a mobile cellular phone only, or if you have a landline or both, many people are not answering their phones. They're letting their phone calls go through a voicemail. So decades ago, it would have been very easy to take a poll just by calling landline phone numbers. In the light of changes that have taken place, it is very difficult for the pollsters to put together a representative sample. So the polling organizations make different assumptions. Who's making the right assumptions? Well, it's hard to say. That will come out in the wash after the election. Um, there's many things you can do. You can call people you can cold call people on mobile or landline phone numbers. You can try to send them texts. You can try to do it by email. You can go around knocking on doors. You can set a booth up on a street corner or in the shopping mall. People, you know, uh, people are not frequenting shopping, shopping malls as much as they used to. Uh, what some organizations try to do is put together a panel and contact the same people over and over again over a period of months or years. Okay. Um, in 2016 and 2020, it looked like the Trump vote was undercounted. There was a voter that supported Trump that was very hard to reach. Some people think that people might not have wanted to admit they were voting for Trump uh, because he tends to attract, shall we say, down market voters and perhaps his views are viewed as less than respectable in certain quarters. Okay. That's hard to say. Uh, in 2022, the, Repub the conservative Republican vote may have been overestimated. It was predicted there would be a big red wave in the midterm congressional elections, and that did not materialize. So we had mistakes made apparently in 2016 and 2020, and then some efforts to correct for those mistakes, and pollsters may have overcompensated and overcorrected in 2022. So there's speculation that there could be a hidden vote for Trump out there or a hidden vote for Harris, one way or the other. We may not even know until the ballot boxes are open and they start counting on Election Day Tuesday evening. So a highly, highly unpredictable election to try to predict difficulty of taking public opinion polls these days. Everybody, on election night itself uh, and the day or two subsequent to election day, it's not 100% clear what will happen. As I mentioned, last time the media organizations did not declare Mr. Biden the winner until the Saturday after the election. Now, some of the things that are going on, most states are prohibited from counting votes until the polls close, even if they have absentee ballots and mail-in votes that you might think they could begin to count. But most jurisdictions prohibit people, the officials, from counting those votes until the polls are closed for people to vote in person 
on election day. Pennsylvania was among the states that was very, very slow to report last time, and that may happen again, although the officials in Pennsylvania say they've taken steps to try to conduct the count faster. Will that pan out or not? Remains to be seen. It still could be stretched out for some time after Election Day. Another issue that could come up, everybody, is that in Georgia, a number of Trump supporters have been elected to positions that have to do with counting and tabulating the vote. Now, among Republicans and Trump supporters, there's a very, very strong suspicion that something was wrong with the vote count last time in 2020. They are absolutely convinced the election was stolen. Okay. It's a fair statement to say we've gotten to a point that neither side believes the other is willing to play fair. So that makes it very, very difficult for us to say what will happen in the immediate aftermath of the election. Everybody, if it goes like it's going in the past, you can expect Vermont, Maryland, and Indiana to be among the first states called. It is widely expected as a near certainty that Harris will carry Vermont and Maryland and Trump will carry Indiana. So when those are reported, it will not be a surprise and not much of a clue to how it will go the rest of the evening. Uh, if, if Vice President Harris does better than expected, if she carries a lot of states in the eastern and central time zones, then the election could be called at 10 o'clock central time because that's when the polls close on the west coast in California, Oregon, and Washington, and those three states are expected to go for Vice President Harris. So they could put her over the top if she does well in the eastern and central time zones. So you might want to keep an eye on, keep your television on, at or just after 10 o'clock central time on election night. That may or may not be the case. Now, it has been speculated that Mr. Trump will make an appearance on election night and declare victory no matter how the returns are going. Okay. Um, we don't exactly know what will happen in the immediate aftermath of the election. There are several checkpoints, or choke points, shall we say, because what we really have, of course, is 51 elections going on at the same time in 50 states plus the District of Columbia. There are a number of important deadlines that have to be met after the election. Both sides are lawyered up. Lawsuits may be filed, and in some cases may already have been filed, to challenge aspects of the vote count in the immediate aftermath of the election. We could hear about that in the few days after the election. Along about December 11th, the states in their state legislatures have to certify the election results in their states. Uh, there could be demonstrations, there could be protests, there could be violence surrounding that. If, it, such, things, if such things did not happen earlier, it could happen along or about December 11th. Then, of course, after the first of the year, once the new Congress is sworn in, along or about January 3rd, then Congress has to certify the count of the electoral votes on January 6th, and we know what happened on January 6th, 2021. That will be a, could be a terribly fraught occasion. We can't really predict exactly what will happen along about that time. So uh, a situation that's very, very unpredictable in any number of respects. And I wish I could tell you more about it, but uh, that's about all we can say, speaking just a couple of days before the election, as we are right now on Sunday, November 3rd. All right, then, but what we are more immediately concerned with is our exam on the 7th, class notes for unit 3 and 4, plus four things to read to access online. Okay. Everybody, one or two of those can be accessed, I believe, through the McKee Library, through their subscription, the Wall Street Journal. Keep that in mind. You should be able to access two Wall Street Journal articles that way. I believe we've assigned you two from the Wall Street Journal, so keep that in mind. Available all day, Thursday, November 7th, a couple of days after the election. And right after, right after that, we will get the information about out about units five and six, which will be the material for the third exam, which we will take before Thanksgiving, before we take off for the Thanksgiving holidays. So, 
exercise your right to vote if you are registered to do so. I hope you all are. And uh, we will see what happens in the election, and we'll talk to you again about a week from now at this time. Good luck on the exam on Thursday. Available to you all day Thursday for 24 hours, 50. Two false and multiple choice items based on units three and four. Good luck, and we'll talk to you again in about a week.